Okay. Uh, well, lovely, lovely to virtually meet you all. I feel kind of like I'm there, which is nice. I can see the back of your heads, which is great. Um, so <laughs> thank you for having me. My name's Sarah Viner. I'm the customer success manager for the partnership between LinkedIn Learning and PSU. Um, I have been working at LinkedIn for about three and a half years now um, and previously came from the education technology world um, where I worked on actually an AI adaptive learning platform called Newton. If anyone would like to follow a, an AI story of um, a really cool concept with no business model, I highly recommend looking that one up for maybe a, like what not to do business wise with your amazing AI ideas. Um, but a really cool concept and something that still exists, just sort of a, a part of a different company now. Um, and before that, I was a teacher. I taught 10th grade and 5th grade here in New York, where I'm based in Brooklyn, taught in the Bronx and in Brooklyn. Um, so I'm excited to chat with you all today. I'd love to kick it over to my partner in crime over here, Kim, to do a quick intro, and then we'll dive right into our content for the day. So hi, guys. I'm Kim Lugers. I'm based in Chicago. I've been with LinkedIn for about 10 years now. And I've had the pleasure of working with so many different um, Penn State folks, you know, across campus and different departments and even different Commonwealth um, campuses as well. So I'm just really excited to be a part of this tonight. Um, encourage you guys to drop questions in the chat. I'll be monitoring that as we go through the presentation. Um, and yeah, just there's really no such thing as a silly question. So please feel free. This is like a dialogue. We want you guys to get as much out of this as possible. So, so bring on the questions. Agreed. There's definitely no bad questions because if you're thinking it, it's highly likely someone else in the room or on the um on the the call is also thinking that question. So don't be shy. Um so I am trying to share my screen, but it says my screen sharing is closed. Can you see that screen? No, okay, let me try again. How about now? It's good, it's saying. Let me try again. I'm gonna re re-show it. Maybe that'll help. Number one challenge is always getting the technology to work. It is saying on our end that you have started screen sharing, but we're not seeing the screen yet. Yeah, I just see resume share. I might just have to make this like a, I'm on presentation mode and it doesn't seem to be enjoying that. Uh, oh, maybe I can share my whole desktop instead. Okay, you see that? Sweet. Yep, perfect. <laughs> perfect. All right. So let's kick off and um, want to preface this as well with the fact that this course, Rock Your LinkedIn Profile, exists on LinkedIn Learning. So don't worry about remembering every single thing that I give you today. Um, we have this awesome course on our LinkedIn Learning platform. Um, obviously, it's a different presenter and in a very different tone and probably some slightly different um, recommendations and suggestions. But it might be nice for you to revisit that at a later date, think a bit more about some of the additional and supplementary things that you can do after what we talk through today. Um, and if you do have any questions, obviously ask them throughout the session. Um, as Rohan said, he's got the mic. So I encourage you to shove your hand in the air and ask a, a question with your voice. Always love that. Um, or if you are Zooming in or if you've joined the meeting on the side, you can always use the chat button. Um, I can see someone already dropped in. Oh my gosh, Brad, we have to uh, we have to talk more about Newton afterwards. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, and if you have any questions after the fact, feel free to connect with me and we'll talk a little bit more about connection. So don't hit that connect button yet because I'm going to give you some good tips and you can you can test them out right away today. Um, so quick question, and I'd love to get some shout outs around the room. I don't know if you want to hot mic that or, or share in the chat if you're around on the chat as well. But I'd love to know briefly what you're planning on getting out of today's session. It is 6.30 in the evening. Um, so you care enough to be spending at least an hour of your evening to be here today. So I'd love to know what you're hoping to get out of this session today. Um, what are you looking to learn about LinkedIn? What undying questions do you have there? And um, what thoughts did you come in with? Share them out loud or pop them into the chat. 
whichever is easiest. I'll give it a minute to share out. And remember, I taught in a classroom, so I can handle like quite a long, uncomfortable silence. Anyone want to put their hand up after why they're here? You can tell Sarah. Anyone? I have the added benefit of being able to see you guys so I can also uh, call on people. <laughs> hey. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan. I'm a second year. Uh, what I was hoping to get out of here is uh, firstly to kind of know how I'm supposed to um, create my LinkedIn uh, just to <laughs> leverage my professional development and then how we can use that for the AI challenge, which is basically... Um, an opportunity for us students to create an idea and kind of turn that into a full-fledged like MVP. Um, wow. And it just has to help society and use AI. So that's our club, basically. Tiny, tiny mission. Love that. Help society and use AI. Um, that's a great goal. Yeah, absolutely. And and how maybe you can like preference, uh, how you can talk about it and reference it on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, let's definitely talk through that. Thank you. Great, great call out, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. Anyone else do we have in the room? I see you. One more. Oh, there we go. Got one more. I can't be running around the room. Okay. Yeah, get your steps in today, Rohan. Um, first of all, can it be a general question or just about like why am I here? Both, general, whichever. Um, would you say that it's better to use your LinkedIn as a CV where you list everything or as a resume where you list like your best achievements or selected stuff? So that's something that's great been on mind a lot. So that's why I wanted to come here and make sure that I- Yeah, that's a great, that. great concept. There's a big difference between LinkedIn and a resume. So we'll certainly talk through that. Um, fun fact, in England, we just call it CV. We don't talk about resumes. And so we, we have the same rules for a CV as we do a resume. Um, so we'll talk through a little bit of the differences about what you would want to put on your LinkedIn that you probably wouldn't have space for on a resume or a CV. Um, so yeah, thank you for asking that. Great question. Thank you. Uh, I'm Amani Sharma and I'm a freshman. Awesome. Thanks, Amani. Congrats on your first okay, year. One more person. One more, what do we do? Okay. I feel like I'm on a game show. Damn. Put me everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Far right corner. Hi. Um, okay. Hi. I'm Divyani. So I'm not part of the AI club whatsoever, but it's just to, you know, like I know that LinkedIn, at least when you're looking at, pro at a profile, it's a quick look. So how to make it more effective, how to list things down. And I think most importantly, like how to make categories. Cause like, I know there's so many categories which you can put like your education in and courses you've done. So I think, you know, just going through like how to put it into a profile. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome point. Yeah, and, and, a, and a worthy note actually that doesn't come up a lot that it is, it can kind of be like a snapshot. So as much as you might spend hours and hours perfecting every single word on your entire profile, realistically, people are going to be dropping onto your profile and then maybe spending like 30 seconds to an hour kind of thing um, on your profile, 30 seconds to a minute on your profile. So you do want to have it be that snapshot. You want to have it be that quick glance to tell, tell your story, your professional story and get your professional brand out there. So yeah, well, let's talk a bit more about how to make it really effective. Those are awesome pieces. Keep them coming. If you come up with other things along the way, do not be shy to interrupt. Um, this should be a back and forth discussion today a little bit. So I'm excited to talk a little bit more about some of those pieces that you all asked about. Um, and worthwhile also prefacing, I heard first and second year. I imagine some of you are third and fourth years as well. Um, but realistically, you probably have a pretty clear plan of what you want to do when you leave PSU. And realistically, the universe probably has a different plan. So part of the reason we're going to talk through LinkedIn and how to use the platform is because amidst all of those ups and downs, those benchmarks, those obstacles, um, those success points, mm -hmm. you want to be able to showcase everything that you've been through and tell people what you've learned. So really giving a clear impression of here's how I can add the value to wherever I'm going based on my experience, whether that was all part of your plan or whether that was a very unforeseen pivot. So also encourage you not to take notes today. You do not have to go through and like write down all the statistics that I share. I'm going to share this entire deck with you after the session anyway. So you have all the statistics if you do want to reference them. Um, what I would love for you to do is just give yourself a list of about three things, maybe five things if you're feeling ambitious 
and have those things have a real timeline. So give yourself at least one thing you can get done in the next 24 hours, one thing you can get done within the next week, and one thing you can get done within the next month. And think about some really tangible takeaways. So I want to fix this or change this or add to this, whatever it is, come away with at least some quick wins that you know you are going to be able to put into place quickly without just having it stew in the back of your mind. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about just the overview of LinkedIn. Um, my toddler was playing on my laptop right before the session and there was a slide missing. I was going to give you a bunch of statistics about how many people were on LinkedIn. Um, it is about 830, more than 830 million members at this point. We have over 120,000 schools represented and we have about 11 million jobs on LinkedIn at any one time, which means that every minute four people get a job on LinkedIn. Um, and those statistics were on a slide, but I had to remember them all. So hopefully I got them all right. <laughs> so the general point is that LinkedIn is the biggest and most important professional networking um, space to be a part of. And it means that you wanna really be able to represent yourself well as a professional on this platform. Um, it's also obviously with all those jobs, it's a place where you can connect to opportunity. And that's our bigger mission, connect people with economic, op economic opportunity. Now, quick couple of items to know. There is a big difference between social media and between LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is really a professional networking site, whereas LinkedIn, other social media websites are a little bit different. Um, this is just a funny graphic that hopefully doesn't make everyone too hungry um, for donuts. But the idea of what you might put on your Instagram as a photo of a donut, what you might do on TikTok, make a donut dance, what you might be listening to on Spotify. Um, maybe you're super into cooking and so you have a Pinterest. Um, the, the idea of adding a donut recipe versus how you would want to portray anything to do with donuts on LinkedIn. So think about those career aspirations. I want to do this, like operate a donut franchise, or I'm actually looking for a job in this industry. Or here's the experience I have and my background in donut making. Um, or here are some recommendations from people I've worked with at donut companies. So all still on the same subject, but you're really turning it around and making this a professional space. So if you're ever unsure of, should I post this on LinkedIn or is this too personal? For now, I would encourage you to just keep it to your social media keep that space within LinkedIn completely professional. And then as you get further on in your career, you can make a little bit more clear decisions around that. Um, but for now, you wanna really delineate between social media and between your professional brand on LinkedIn itself. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your profile. I'm gonna run through my top 10 tips for content to put on LinkedIn. Um, these are just some of the pieces. This is not everything. So please do ask if I don't talk about a specific section that you had questions about, let me know. We can discuss that. Um, but to start with, you are really, really encouraged to put on a photo. And the number one reason is that people want to connect with real life human beings. They don't want to be accidentally connecting with a bot. And the easiest way to make sure that you are connecting with the person and that you're recognizing the correct person, not someone with the same name as you, um, is to add a profile picture. So if you have a photo, you're going to get nine times more connection requests, 21 more profile views, and 30 36 times more messages. So clear, clear difference. A few top tips about your photo. You do not have to go out and pay a professional photographer to get a professional headshot. Please don't, um, unless you need that for something else. So the idea of a LinkedIn profile photo is that it is just you. It represents what you actually look like now, not two, three, four years ago. Um, and it should just represent who you are in your professional community. So good lighting, neutral background, someone that actually looks like you, um, all of those pieces are really important. We also have photo filters on the profile on, on the LinkedIn platform. So if you want, you can just um, neaten it up by adding one of those filters, but you know, obviously maybe not as far as like the TikTok filters that make you look like a different person. Um, and it should not be including anyone else. Don't include your dog, don't include your other half or your partner or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Next up, there is an amazing feature where you can record your name. And this is a feature that exists just on the mobile app. So you will have to use the LinkedIn app itself. 
The main reason for recording your name is to make a good first impression with other people. And also just acknowledging that your name might be easy for you to pronounce, but for other people, it might not be their first language, whatever your first language is. It's important to help them also know that they're not messing up your name upon the first time meeting you. Um, it's a quick recording piece. You only have 10 seconds, so it's really just your name. And you want to just make sure you're in a quiet place, no toddlers in the background. Um, hold that phone like four inches or more away from your mouth so that it, you don't get any feedback. And, and it's a nice way to just make a really good first impression and avoid any awkwardness about mispronunciation, which I feel connected to because my name is said Sarah, but it's spelled Sarah and that's confusing. Then we also have a relatively new feature as of last year of adding your pronouns. And what we're seeing is that about 70% of job seekers believe that it's important that recruiters and hiring managers know their gender pronouns. We're also seeing that um, hiring managers in the vast majority believe that it shows respect and it is optional as well. So you do not have to put this in, um, but it's a great way to just holistically show up as your authentic self. You can also set the visibility. So if you do choose to add it, but you don't want it to be front and center on your page, that's totally fine. It can just be in the background for recruiters as well. An industry is piece that is often overlooked but adding your industry is really important. It's often how other people will find you and add you to their professional network. So we find that um, people are using this search, especially recruiters are using the industry filter on their search, which means that you're gonna see about 38, more ti 38 times more discoverability within a recruiter search with your industry lined up. And that all leads to a lot more profile views, about nine times more, so this is a big feature of how people are using our platform. A couple of things to know. If you don't know what industry you want to go into, it's absolutely fine to put higher education as your industry, because right now you might only be a first or a second year. I had no idea what I was going to go into until like last year, basically, but definitely not when I was a first or second year student. So do feel free to just put higher ed and then you can spell out on your profile that you're currently studying, you're a student. But if you know what industry you're, in, you, you're interested in going into, like computer software, like on the screen, or software engineering or AI, there might be a specific industry that you want to include there and start connecting already with recruiters and people within the industry that you're planning on getting a job in. Remember, everything on LinkedIn is live. So you don't have to worry about adding something in and realizing a year later that, whoops, that's actually not what I want to do anymore. You can come back in and change it as often as you want to, update the information regularly. And actually, I encourage you to do that because partially it's going to keep your profile as up to date as possible, but it's also going to make sure that you're seeing new features that are coming out on the platform regularly. So it's not a, you know, write at one time and then don't look at it again until you're ready to apply for your next job. So the summary section is an area that I get more questions about than any. So I will certainly take a breath after this and see if anyone has any questions on this one too. Um, but this is what will show up on the about section on your, on your profile itself for other people. You can think of this as your elevator pitch. And elevator pitches are really hard. There's an amazing course called Jody Glickman's Pitching Yourself, which I will drop a link in at the end of this. Um, and that course will give you a bit of an overview of what sort of content you might want to put into this section. But the idea is in general, this is an introduction to you, but it should really be highlighting your accomplishments and your aspirations. So who you are, what you've done and what you want to do. And think of this as a trailer, short and sweet. Do not go into all of your career experience because you have the experience section for that. Don't go into all of the details about your degree and your education and what you're studying. Just give a very high level snapshot of your unique talents and how you want to contribute. Remember that anyone that is interested in employing you and you're connecting with them LinkedIn for a job potentially, they're going to be reading your LinkedIn with, a, with the question in their mind of how will this person add value to my company? And so with that in mind, think about where your specific skill sets are and how you might be able to contribute those talents to an industry that you're looking to go into. It should be more than 40 words, but it does not need to be a long essay. And know that the summary itself will be compressed. So just as someone was saying at the top of the hour, um, this is a snapshot. It's not going to be someone that's spending an hour on your, on your LinkedIn profile 
it's just going to be a quick skim. And so this is something that will show up right at the top, just a short version. So make sure that you can see when you go on and preview your profile, check what kind of information you have here um, and make sure that the right stuff is showing up right at the top before you've condensed it as well. Great point from Brad. Love that. Chat GPT, that, um, our Microsoft tool. Um, that's a that's a good idea to see if they can give you at least a quick overview, a nice place to start. Um, and then you can go in and edit it for your own authorial voice to make sure it's authentic to you. Great idea. Hey, that's a good usage for chat GPT. I like it. So far, I've just heard it's been really flipping the higher ed industry upside down with the college essay. <laughs> Um, one note, I don't have a piece on here about headlines. So the headline is different. At the very top of your profile, you have your name. And then directly underneath your name, you have that headline, which is not the same as your summary. Your headline is just a call out of what you do. Um, that could either be like a mission statement, a very, you know, very short, short sentence statement, or it could also be your role. So if you already have a job or you know that you're looking for a job, like maybe you are a you know, fourth year student in this major looking to work in blank, that might be your, your headline as well. Um, but those two pieces are different. Headline is just literally um, a short sentence. And then your about section is a bit more of an expansion. So I'm going to pause before we talk about featuring content. Any questions about the summary section? I'll go back here. Or has anyone struggled with this? I certainly did. All right. Okay. So let's talk a bit more about content. Um, this is the featuring section where you can showcase work that you are proud of and you want to put that right at the top of your profile. So if you think about a project you've worked on or if you think about a website you've designed or maybe you are a part of a challenge, we've been talking a little bit about the AI challenge, maybe whatever comes out of the AI challenge, with that MVP product, there's a cool website that you create for it, or you know, just a, a brief intro or a video or a reel, um, something that you want to put onto your profile. It's just going to really bring some interesting content to your profile. This is one of the places that a resume or a CV is really different to LinkedIn because it's this live space. So it has the ability to interact with. Folks can come onto your profile and look at it and say, oh, I want to click into these different links because what this person has posted as their content is going to tell me more about how they work than what they've described their experience to be. So I encourage you to think really hard about all of the different things that you can put on. Um, think about if you've ever worked for a company or interned for a company in the past, or if you've ever volunteered for a company or an organization before, you could add the brand video for that organization. Um, you could add a website for them to tell a bit more interesting content about it. You could also put in an article that someone else has written with some context about why you're interested in it. So it doesn't have to be something that you've authored. But the general idea here is that there are articles, images, documents, links um, that all help bring your story to life and make your whole profile engaging and interesting to be on. And let's get into work experience. Now, big caveat, you may not have any work experience yet. You may have never had a job when you were in high school and you might not be working now in college until you're graduating. That's totally fine and very common. So don't worry if you don't have any work experience. If you do, keep that up to date. If you do have an up-to-date position, you're going to get more connections, more profile views, more messages. The main reason there being that people know you're actually on the platform. So you're interacting with it. They know you're an active member. They're not going to be wasting their time if they reach out to you. But the general idea of work experience is that you're telling a professional story, talking about your accomplishments within each of those different roles and showcasing your general experience. This can be in bullet points or it can be in a short paragraph. It is totally up to you. Neither are correct or wrong. Um, and then overall, you're writing a story about your professionalism. So what did you do at all the different companies you've worked for? What was that company? So for example, Brad knows who Newton is, but often people don't know who Newton is because we were bought by a big publishing company. And so the name kind of disappeared. 
So when I write about my experience at that company, I want to make sure that I give a quick detail about what that company did so that it sets a bit of context around the work I did there. If you've ever worked for a small company, volunteer or work, include the information about it so that people get a bit more information about what kind of work that was and what kind of experience it gave you. And then do think about what you did in that role, but also how you impacted it. So what was the impact that you had on the company? What was the, the what were the results that you delivered and the change that you created? This is where you want to start bragging. So don't be shy. Do think about all of the different places that you can show off. Think about the different um, value that you brought to the company and really highlight those with words like, initiated, spearheaded, led, guided, discovered, explored, things that are impressive and words that are achievement focused, they're going to really bring up all different sorts of content that will help people understand how you would bring value to their company as well. Brad, I think maybe your question was about the, the rich media area. Was that the best place to place news articles and blog posts? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's the best place to do that. So you can either use that as a post as well, or you can post it into your rich media and then make a post about that rich media. So that whole featured carousel will show up right at the top of your screen. It won't be there until you start putting content into it. Um, but absolutely, if there was like an article about something that you were involved in, maybe you win the AI challenge um, and there's an article about it in the PSU paper and, and other papers as well you could put a link to that article into your um, featured content, which is the rich media. Yes, exactly. Thank you for calling that up. Hey, Sarah, I have my own question, actually. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and then there's one person with a question after me. Amazing. Um, so my question is, a lot of students don't necessarily have like proper work experience to put in this section. Sure. So is this a good place to put like roles they have on campus, their on-campus jobs? You know, like if they were in an organization, um, is this a good place to put it and what information should they add if they do put it there? Yeah, absolutely. So I, in my mind, a very hard line. If you are being paid for that role on campus, then it should go into work experience. If you are volunteering, then it should go into volunteer experience. So I was the president of the salsa dancing club at my university. That is something I put in volunteer experience. But I also did some coaching that I was paid for. That is something that I would put into my work experience. So while they were two jobs that I had in college, they weren't full-time, they were part-time roles while I was studying. They have different locations on my profile on purpose. Um, and whether or not it's work or volunteer experience, the exact same advice goes. How did you impact that organization? What were your results there? What were you responsible for? Build out the accomplishments that you had while you were doing that job. Great question, Rohan, thank you. Yep, that sounds good. Um, anyone have any questions about the work experience section? You do? Okay, perfect. And name again, please. And then... um, hi, Sarah. I'm Amani again. Hi, um, hi. My question was, I know, I think it's um, fair to admit that everyone exaggerates a little bit on LinkedIn, you know, makes it a little more dialed up. And that's understandable. But how do you keep it in the, to a, like, a realistic and genuine phase? Like, it is understandable and you can still rely the person of what they're saying but it still seems substantial enough to be like oh that's amazing yeah yeah great question <laughs> I wish there was a manual on this one um so I think big difference between exaggerating and and uh excluding so I think that folks on LinkedIn probably only talk about the good stuff they're not going to say well, there were, there were quite a lot of days where I was sick or I didn't feel well, or actually one of my best friends worked at that company. And so we spent a lot of time chatting and I didn't really get any work done. <laughs> like those things, are, those are going to be exclusions. Whereas an exaggeration might give a false impression of what you did. So I think you want to be really mindful of the information that you put onto your profile and the way that you describe your role. If you know that you were having a conversation with an interviewer and they asked you, oh, you said you came up with this idea or you spearheaded this initiative. Tell me more about that. If you think that you would get stuck in a circle and you'd be like, well, when you actually asked me the details, I guess I wasn't really in charge of it. I was just like one of 12 people involved. 
then you want to really back up and make sure that you're telling the whole story. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, references are really easy to find and most companies ask for a reference. So if you're putting an exaggeration on there that's really not true, it's going to come out really fast. But more importantly, you never want to be in the um, scenario where you're interviewing with someone and they're reading off your LinkedIn profile and it like catches you by surprise because it's not actually the experience that you had. So I'd say the fine line is obviously honesty, first and foremost, just being really, really specific. Make sure that you're pulling out the accomplishments that you had and and don't be shy about talking about the impact that you had, but do make sure that you're not exaggerating to a point that is meaning that some of the information you're including is not no longer true. Thank you so much. Of course. Do we have any other questions in the room? If we do, just get your hand up real quick. Otherwise, we do have time for questions later as well. There's a really good question in the chat too. Oh, there's a question in the chat. Okay. Um, I can't see it. Brad, can you? Yeah, Lucas Lucas asked, what if our work experience is relatively mundane and unrelated to the positions that we're applying for? Like if you're working in a fast food restaurant. Lucas, there is no job that you could have that you didn't learn from, truly. Like I've had all kinds of ridiculous jobs and I've learned so much from everything. And if anyone ever interacted with Jen, who was the CSM for this for PSU before me, um, we often talked about our bartending experience. So that was my first real job before college. I started managing a bar. First I was a bartender and then they made me the manager of the bar. And I learned so much from just being a bartender, probably more than managing the bar, because you start learning all these different people skills about interacting with people, about handling pressure, about timeliness, about uh, remembering and adding to things. Like there are so many different executive functioning skills there that you are gaining from any kind of job. And those skills are exceptionally transferable. So also just knowing that having work experience means that you've been a part of things like payroll. You've understood what an HR team maybe looks like, or even just the, the ability to keep track of like, I know how to submit my W-4 and I know how to, um, you know, submit timesheets or punch in and out or keep to my schedule or ask for shifts, whatever those things are. Those are all important skills that show off that you have valuable skills to apply to a company. So my recommendation at this stage, at this cross section of your lives is to include everything that you've done because it's just going to round you out as a professional and give people something to talk about when they're interviewing you. Later on down the line, you'll find that some of these positions that I had are no longer on my LinkedIn profile because I don't think they're adding to my story that much. So I might remove them a lot later on if they're very, very old. Um, but it might still just make me a more interesting person to talk to. So I encourage you to in include all of that information and really try and build out some of the skills that you had there. Even if it feels like you didn't gain that many skills, you, you probably had more than you thought. Great question. Thank you, Lucas. All right, let's talk about volunteering because you might not have any work experience and that's absolutely fine, but you probably have some work, ex some volunteer experience. And you might be surprised to know that um, about half of our recruiters will say that they value volunteer experience as highly as work experience. So a lot of people out there that care just as much about it. Now, if you're adding volunteer experience, you're also going to get more profile views. You're more likely to be hired. And one of the key reasons for this is that volunteering for anything shows that you are a good person and people want to work with good people. So think through rounding out your professional identity, uniquely telling your story, and just adding in that volunteer experience, include a quick description of what that organization does, because, I mean, even like a Red Cross blood services is pretty self-explanatory, but maybe people don't know what Make-A-Wish America is, and so they want to put some more information on there to add in some context about what that company or organization does. Um, make sure that you're including this as anything that you were not paid for. So as Rohan mentioned, is this a place where you want to put like student organizations? This is where you want to put that. So volunteering for a student org, volunteering for even like if you're interning and it's an unpaid internship, I would include that in volunteer experience as well. Um, it's also going to speak a bit to how committed you are to something. So if you're spending a summer doing unpaid work experience, that means you care enough about gaining that experience that that was something you spent your summer doing without any cash. So important piece to keep in mind as well. 
And more and more, you're going to hear us talking about skills. We are talking constantly about, at LinkedIn anyway, a skills-based uh, society, a skills-based economy. So thinking through less about the experience and the roles that people have had, we're putting more emphasis on the skills that people are bringing to jobs. And you'll find that recruiters and hiring managers are looking more for skills now than they are for experience or titles. So adding five or more skills is going to get you about 17 times more profile views. And a big reason for this is that professionals use key, key search skill terms to search for different people across the platform. So it's a really good way to actually be found by people that should be in your network or that are or already in your network looking for folks to work for them. You're in full control of your skills. You can add any skills you want. Obviously, don't add skills that you don't have because it will very quickly be found out. Um, but also consider which ones you want to feature. So you have up to five skills to feature and the first three show up right at the top of that list. Um, they're never compressed. So think about the different skills that are important in the industry that you're looking to go into and include those skills, assuming that you have them, include them at the top of the profile. And if you realize that some of the skills that are really important for the industry that you want to work in, if you realize you don't have some of them, then go to LinkedIn Learning and try and learn some of those skills. Maybe you want to be a software engineer, but so far you've only learned R as your programming language and you know that Python is the fastest growing one. Go in and take, on, take in some Python courses. So easy ways to add new skills to your profile. You can also delete skills. So if there are skills that are on there from previous courses or previous roles that you had that you think are totally irrelevant, you can always delete them. And then you can get endorsements on them. So a really good way to get endorsed is to endorse someone else. So maybe choose someone that is in this AI group with you in the Nittany group um, and endorse them on some of the skills. Maybe you've seen them public speaking or give a presentation and you know they're great at it. Go ahead and endorse them for that skill. Or maybe you know that they are actually really well versed in AI. Go ahead and endorse them for that skill. And remember that you probably know more about AI than the average person as well. So they'll, if you endorse them, they'll endorse you back usually. It's a good way to just get some of that LinkedIn karma rolling around. Yes, there is, Brad. Thank you for asking. It's almost like a plant. Um, so that is one way. Yeah, finding key skills in a specific domain or industry. You could look at people in those positions that have done a good job or have been successful, but you would also be assuming that they are listing their skills correctly on the profile. The best thing to do is to go to our workplace learning report. Um, we literally just published ours today. And we do one every year, LinkedIn workplace learning report. Um, and from there, you're going to see the top growing skills in different industries. Um, I'll drop a link to it in our chat when we get to the Q&A section here as well. So you can take a look. Um, but we'll see the skills that are most in demand. And those are listed by recruiters. So it's really key that people have the different skills for those areas. We get it directly from the horse's mouth, and then we put that out in our workplace, uh, in our workforce development report as well. So I'll share those links with you, and you can take a look a bit more. Yes, yeah. So people won't usually know, Kenzie. No one is going to spend a lot of time going in and like, like on their screen. No one's going to be like, "Let me look at who Christine Woods is. Do I trust her?" <laughs> like for endorsing the skills. They're more going to be looking at the number of endorsements, which is also a reason why you should be networking, connecting with people on the platform. I hate the word networking, but generally growing out your network on the platform will help you in this sense. Um, they're not going to be like, oh, it's only another student who endorsed them. It doesn't make any difference. I don't believe a student. Realistically, what they're looking for is any kind of testament testimony from other people that exist. So this is a real person. I know that uh, they are connected with other people who know what skills they have. Um, and that just starts to narrow down a little bit more about what your kind of footprint in the, in the industry is as well. It would be awesome if it was like a real expert in the space, but they're not going to spend that much time figuring it out. And by they, I mean like hiring managers, recruiters, that sort of thing. Great question. Okay, so a vaguely similar note um, and all the same pieces about the endorsement here too. You have the opportunity to get a recommendation on LinkedIn and now is the time to do it because you are connected with so many folks who can speak to what you're good at right now 
Think about any TAs that you've interacted with, people that run your student organization, um, peers that you're connected with, folks who've done group projects with, anyone that can speak to you and your professional credibility is just going to be a perfect person to ask for a recommendation. So a couple of top tips. If you don't already have, if you've never asked for a recommendation from anyone or a reference for a job or anything like that, firstly, start making yourself a short list of all those pieces. And then from there, you have the opportunity to start asking other people that maybe you haven't worked with in the past, if you want to start building out your footprint that way. But make sure that they know this request is coming. So ask in person, give a quick heads up, say, I'd love to get a, requ a recommendation from you. We worked together on X, Y, and Z. Um, here's how I know that you can add to my LinkedIn profile and my professional identity. And if you have a moment, here's an idea of what you might write about. Especially if you're going to someone that is quite senior, maybe a senior leader or an executive or someone that you know is limited on time, a professor that has a very big class, for example, make sure that you're just giving them a bit of a framework because that'll help them take a first pass at it. It'll save them time as well. They could, of course, completely ignore your framework. You know, you might say, here are some ideas of what you could talk about and the way we work together. And you might say, no, it's fine. I don't need that. But it's really thoughtful to just give them a bit of a framework to work off of rather than throwing them in the deep end. And highly recommend not asking for recommendations from people that you haven't worked closely enough that you think they might go, uh, I have no idea what to say about that person. Just eliminate that whole awkward moment and don't even ask. So think of people that you know can give a valid and a valuable recommendation to you. Okay, so those are my top 10 steps. I'm going to pause for any questions about any of the things we talked about here uh, that you didn't get to ask yet or other parts of the profile that I didn't yet talk about that you'd like to ask any questions about. Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Brad. So um, there is a space on LinkedIn where you can add badges. Um, we call them licenses and certifications and love that you all are going to be receiving them. And I would like to know how you're doing that as well, because we talk a lot about this, whether it's maybe through Credly. I think you guys have a subscription too. Um, so within LinkedIn Learning, any course that you do, you have the option to put a certificate of completion onto your LinkedIn profile. And I think I have a slide for that. Yes, I do. Um, so for example, this is a course that Jen took. She took her certificate of completion and downloaded it, but she'll also drop that onto her licenses and certification section on LinkedIn, because this is a topic that she was learning a lot about. She knows it's gonna lend a lot of uh, industry expertise to her role. And she wants to show off that she's learning in that area. Now, um, you might start posting courses like specific programming languages that you're fluent in. You might post some of the certificates of completion on there. That is a good start. What I would recommend is that you also take a look at skills evaluations. Yep, skills evaluations. We also have a new feature called skills assessments on LinkedIn Learning. So very struggling to keep them apart, basically. Um, but your skills evaluations are on the LinkedIn profile on the platform. You can take essentially a test and you can, if you pass with, I think it's 70% or higher, you can put that badge onto your LinkedIn profile. And that is really well received by recruiters. Um, your, your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn learning badges are also going to be helpful, but oh, I'm not sure what happened there, but probably not as important as the evaluations themselves, because there's no test involved with that. It's not, you can get the certificate whether you've passed any knowledge assessment or not. Um, and I'm not sure what happened to my, there we go. Should be back on the screen, I think. Um, so definitely take the time to think about what kind of badges from LinkedIn Learning might be useful. Remember you have access to LinkedIn Learning throughout the time you're at PSU. We've talked through courses like Pitching Yourself on Jodie Glickman. There's an amazing resume course on there if you haven't written your own resume yet. 
Um, there are some really good courses about like finding, finding meaning and purpose. And so thinking through like the big existential questions of what do I want to do with my life? Those are some really good courses as well. And then it goes all the way down to the specifics around like time management and interviewing skills and informational interviewing skills and negotiating a salary. So think about the courses that you do and don't want to showcase on your profile, whether they like add to your professionalism or not. Um, and which ones you might want to add on. Um, And then do take the opportunity to post things like from the AI challenge as well. Any badges that you can get that are particular to your experience at PSU will certainly round out your professional identity as well. Perfect. Um, We have a couple questions in the room. Let me start. Okay. And again, it's going to be your first name and then your year. Hi, my name is Mustafa. And I as you mentioned that we have uh, access to LinkedIn learning through PSU email. My question is how do I link my personal LinkedIn account to my PSU account? Great question. Have you already activated your account? Yes, both of them. And I was just trying to link them together and it wasn't possible. Easiest way is that you can just go to any course. And when you go to the Q and A section on the bottom of that course page, you're going to see that it is only for connected profiles. And so there'll be a prompt there to connect your profile. So it would uh, tell me how to connect my LinkedIn learning profile, LinkedIn learning PSU profile to my personal account. Yeah, that's the same answer. Yeah, I can't just like merge the two accounts into one, right? So they're not, they're not merged, they're connected. So your LinkedIn learning profile is going to be through PSU. And your LinkedIn profile is always going to be your personal account. So you shouldn't be attaching that one to your PSU email because you might lose access to your PSU email at some point. Um, so your personal email should be your LinkedIn account. That's that you're, you're going to keep that. There's only ever going to be one, right? So you don't get a new, when you graduate, you don't get a new LinkedIn account. So you'll go over to LinkedIn and make sure that that one's your personal account. And then once you've logged in through the SSO with PSU on LinkedIn Learning, from your PSU LinkedIn learning account in the Q&A of that course, you'll be able to connect the two spots. So they're still completely separate instances. You will still need to log in on both spaces. That's really important. It comes up a lot as a question for users. When you log into LinkedIn learning with PSU, you're not going to automatically be logged into LinkedIn because that's your personal instance. So you'll still need to put in your personal password for your LinkedIn account as well. And that will ensure that the two of them are connected. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mr. And we have, I think it was Deviani, right? Hi. Um, so I have, like, personally, I'm a design student, so um, intended UI UX major. But um, I've noticed, like, a lot of resumes, oh, sorry, a lot of LinkedIn profiles that have resumes attached in the featured yeah. section. And personally, I think that as a design student, that, that makes sense because, like, design yeah. resumes are quite different. How do you view it, like attaching it or even having it on your profile? I agree. (laughs) I think it's great. If you have content or context to add, as especially as a design student that will show off your design skills, put that in there for sure. Um, There are two things that you should also know. So yes, you can just drop it in as your resume up front in your featured content area and um, show off how great you are at design by showing off an, an interesting resume, which are few and far between. Um, The other thing you can do is that in the back end of your profile in the information section, you can also add your resume in as like a template that's already there. And there will be jobs that are available on the LinkedIn platform that you can use quick apply for. So when you hit quick apply, the information from your resume automatically gets generated into that quick application process on LinkedIn itself when you're applying to that job. So it's really helpful to actually have it in both spaces and it'll just save you time. If that helps. Um, sorry, just a follow up quick question. Yeah. So the redundancy, uh, redundancy factor doesn't like, that's okay, right? If you have it. Totally your- fine. You still want to build out that career experience space. So your work experience space is still important, mainly because there is something called um, inferred skills on LinkedIn. So our algorithm, which um, hopefully is, exciting to you all um the linkedin algorithm uses inferred skills based on what is described and written on your profile it can't do that if it's just a link on the profile to a resume that's external 
So you do want to include the same information that you have on your resume. You want to include that in the career experience area. And then anytime a recruiter is looking for folks with the same experience that you've outlined there, they'll actually see it versus saying like, if you were to add in the work experience, like check out my resume, we wouldn't be able to pull any skills or inferred experience from that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Are there any more questions? Um, I know Brad mentioned something about free courses in the chat. So I'm going to quickly give it yes. to him to elaborate on that just a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I just posted in the chat and for the rest of you, I'll also put it in the, uh, I'll put it in our group me for the, for the challenge in the discord, if you're part of the discord, but many individuals don't know that Microsoft has a partnership with Penn state to offer free certifications. Some of the Microsoft, uh, particularly the Azure certifications, some of these cost 200, $250 a piece, and they're free for you while you were here at Penn state. And those are also ones as Sarah, as Sarah was mentioning, that will give you um, uh, certifications that then you can put into your LinkedIn that are actually assessment-based certifications uh, to highlight some of the skills that you've developed. Yeah, that's a huge pack. That's awesome. And there are probably some prep courses. If you look at the certifications and you're like, I don't know all of this stuff about Microsoft, there are probably some prep hours in LinkedIn Learning that we have that are attached to a lot of those certifications as well. And then Sarah, I had a quick question for April. For you um yeah. the certifications can you do them multiple times for example if you don't pass the first time is it possible to do it again great question so no skills evaluations have a time limit so if you don't pass the first time you'll be blocked from taking it again right away we don't want people to just like try and skim scan the system and just take them over and over again so great question don't take the exam until you feel like you probably will pass even then you might be surprised. They are quite rigorous. <laughs> so I was, I've certainly been taken by surprise. I thought like I knew everything about PowerPoint. Turns out I know almost nothing about PowerPoint. So um, definitely make sure that you are pretty well versed before you take that exam. And there should be an assessment check beforehand as well that you can take to just check your own work. Um, what you'll also notice is that in the platform, I think I've just been using the wrong term. I think in LinkedIn Learning, we're calling them skills evaluations. And in on the platform, it's a skill assessment. So in LinkedIn Learning, the skill evaluations, yeah, that is definitely true. Um, those are just for your own self-assessment. So those won't be posted anywhere, whether you pass or not. It's more of a, the question will come up on the screen. And if you are confident in your answer to it, that's what you'll choose as the answers. So it's more of a, like, I'm assessing my own knowledge. Where am I on this? And then at the end, we'll give you a, an estimate of how good or, or not good you are at that thing yet. So beginner, intermediate, advanced. And then from there, you can figure out which gaps you need to close up based on those skills. Sounds lovely. And I don't know if you and Kim want to chime in on this question. Um, do you have like a top three certification that you think most people should try to get or at least attain? No, it's going to be completely different for the industries that you're interested in. There's no top three. Um, everyone does Excel. You know, Excel is important for so many different roles. Excel is by far our most uh, engaged with course on the platform, but it's really going to be dependent on the industry that you go in on which things that you want to, you want to focus on. What do you think, Kim? Yeah, I would definitely agree. Like uh, the gal we were talking to the design, like you're going to be like all about Lightroom and the Adobe certifications. Whereas like somebody who's into, you know, AI, that's good. You're going to be like more into the software applications in that kind of realm. So it's, it's personal, just like your profile, right? I like that little you touch. You can change it end. as you go. If you change your goal. Yeah. So we have a few more minutes left. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, we do one right here. Perfect. I saw one question from Kenzie in the chat about getting referrals from people. Um, and I think I actually have, <laughs> I have a slide for that. Um, we didn't even get into building out your network overall. Um, but I do want, this is probably the most important point. You should be using LinkedIn to network and, and build out your community. And that is both by connecting with people that you already know, that is by searching for people that you have crossed paths with that you want to be connected with. Um, and all of these pieces are going to build out to the fact that you are four times more likely to get hired if you are being referred by someone. 
So this is a good opportunity to start figuring out who you should be connected on LinkedIn, who you should be connected with on LinkedIn. And I want to be absolutely the most important takeaway from this entire hour, if you remember nothing else. When you are sending a request to connect with someone, include a personalized invitation. If you send a request to someone that you don't know, or even that you you think you know, and you hope that they're going to remember you, and you don't include any information about why you're connecting with them, you're highly unlikely to connect with them. I, for one, will not accept a single request, even if it's the person that's been the most vocal in a Rock Your Profile session. I'm not going to accept a request from someone that doesn't add a note, because that means they weren't listening to my session at all. So <laughs> do include where you know that person from. So why are you connecting with them? What is your connection? And if you are going to be asking for some kind of favor, like I'd love to pick your brain on this company that you work for, or I'd love to learn about your experience in this industry, or I actually found this really interesting role at your company and I'd love to ask you more about it. All of those are reasons that you want to tell them upfront. I'm connecting with you. I'd love to find this out from you. And know that people are going to be usually pretty excited to talk to you about it. For the most part, people love to talk about themselves. So it is a, a good opportunity to ask them about themselves or to ask them for information about what they do or where they work. Um, and that is just a really important factor when you're starting to build out your network. And then eventually asking those people if there is a role at that company that you know you are well suited for and qualified for, or at least partially qualified for, that is the time to start asking for referrals. So probably a little further down the line than you're thinking right now, Kenzie, your recommendations are for like any time asking for a referral is going to be like really specific to when you're really job hunting. Hopefully that answers that question too. Yeah. And then we also have another one in the room here as well. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Alexander. I'm just asking if, um, where would you put like projects? So for some clubs, you like, you might do a uh, project but and you want to say you're in that club and you did the project, would that be under education? for clubs or how would you go about that? Yeah, good question. I guess it depends a bit on the kind of project that you're doing. If it's like a, a capstone project that's um, you know part of your senior year in one course and there's some kind of tangible content, then I would put that into the featured content area. So a link to that project. If it's a project that you've been working on that's like a passion project that you've been doing for a couple of years and that you're working towards, I would put that into your work experience, especially if it's something that you've come up with. So if it's not like, you know, part of a course or a part of a club that you're a part of, and it's really an initiative that you've taken, I would probably build out a section within your career, within your work experience to explain what that project that you're working on is. Because it sounds like it's more of a work experience than just like a, a, a little section of a course, that sort of thing. Hopefully that answers that question. Perfect, that did. And then there's one person here with it technical question in regards uh -oh. to using LinkedIn. I don't know if you'd be able to answer it. Um, Probably not, but we can see. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if it's too specific, but <laughs> so in high school, I set up my LinkedIn account and I set up a company as whatever startup I had going on back then. And for some reason, the industry I chose for that was like medical and I haven't been able to change it ever since. I am not <laughs> in that industry at all. I would like to change it to technology like computer science, but every recommendation, every suggestion that I have is doctors and that kind of stuff. And I really want to change it, but I just never see the option. It's uh, a, it, are you talking about a company page? Yeah. Like the, where you select your industry, like it's by yeah. default selected as medical. Every time I change it, it just oh. switches back to med, like the medicine. Field I have no something. idea. Um, that's oh. going to be our support team. Yeah. So put it's in right, the technical support ticket um, and, and see what they have to say about that. So we have a whole right. hiring team and, and com company pages are part of our hiring team. So if, mm -hmm. if you had a hiring person on, they would probably know, but I'm on the learning yeah, side. Yeah, so that I'm makes sense. Thank you so much. That's all right. <laughs> Perfect. And then do we have any final questions from anyone in the room? Um, anyone on Zoom have any questions as well? Then they can ask as well. Um, any more questions? Can't your last chance to ask <laughs> anything? We have a lot of people taking pictures of your course recommendations, Sarah. Great. Yeah. And remember, I'm going to share out this whole deck with you. There are quite a few slides in here that we didn't get to because there were some great questions. So thank you all for asking them today. Um, so don't worry about remembering all of these I'm going to send this over to you that course in the top left is the one I was saying that pitching course and uh, as a final share out that's the QR code to get activated if you haven't logged into your LinkedIn learning profile yet 
Um, I did want to just share the link to our awesome workforce report as well as we log off here. Um, There's also it's hot sure. off the presses. So let me grab that for you. And otherwise, as I said, with a note, feel free to connect with me if you have any other questions. Um, but otherwise, take it one step at a time. Try not to be too overwhelmed. Hot tip is that our um, our mindfulness courses are amazing, like surprisingly amazing as someone who has done a lot of meditation and mindfulness practice. <laughs> so do take a look at our mindfulness meditation courses, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed, especially if you're coming away from this session and being like, whoa, that was so much. I don't even know where to start. Um, so highly recommend uh, spending some time on that. I think that's going to be all for today. Unless anyone has any very final questions. I feel like I'm doing, um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> yeah, an auction. Uh, yeah, an auction, exactly. Um, okay, doesn't look like it. So thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much, Kim, for your time today. Of course. Lovely to chat with you all. Thank you for having us. Um, can't find that link that I was mentioning. I'm sorry. So I will go ahead and share it over with you guys, Rohan and Pat um, and Brad. I'll share it with you with the link to the slides after this and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. But thank you. I don't know if you just heard that was an entire room full of claps there as well. So oh, you guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so just Appreciate for everyone it, but... in the club, everyone on Zoom, um, the slide deck plus the recording to this session will be posted on the group me as well as the Discord, I think. And the, and the newsletter that we have, the bi-weekly newsletter. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any more questions, then just send us an email. We can send it to Sarah. And then remember, you guys can also connect with her. And the key thing being, Put a note, otherwise she will not connect with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm a real rule follower on that one. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for being here. Take care. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much, Kim. Very Bye. much appreciated. Bye.